Good afternoon. I hope that everyone's family's doing great and uh, everybody's staying healthy. Um, feels good coming off a of bye week. Uh, uh, I thought our guys played a, a hell of a game a few weeks back, finding a way to finish and uh, doing whatever we needed to do to help the Chiefs win. And I thought it was a great team victory. Uh, I thought our guys played hard, we played fast, and we did just what we needed to do to find a way to come across the finish line. Um, now, after that, coming off a of bye week, it feels good. Guys are fresh, mentally uh, refreshed, re-energized. Now it's time to, uh, to get ready for a, a big opponent who's who's playing, uh, doing a hell of a job of, of playing hard and playing fast on the defensive side of the ball. And I know our guys are excited to, to face this opponent. With all that said, uh, I'm all ears. Let's go first to Seren Petro. Go ahead, Seren. Uh, Coach, uh, just the the overall, first of all, uh, the, the victory lap, we've kind of heard everybody else talk about it. Just your thoughts on uh, the Raiders and how much press that's getting uh, in both towns that they took a lap around uh, in their bus after the game. I'm, I'm curious if, if you've ever done it. And then, Brad, I'll, I'll have a follow-up. So I, I'm, I'm honestly just hearing about the victory lap and – um, it, it, it doesn't mean anything. You guys got to understand, I was raised in this division. I played with the San Diego Chargers back in the day. So we understand what the AFC West is all about. Now, maybe the, the bus driver took a wrong turn and, and had to just circle the, the, the stadium, but none of that matters. It really doesn't <laughs> shape what, how we're going to prepare or, or do anything different. The only thing that we need to know is to make sure that we're mentally and physically prepared to go out and play a 60 minute hard fought battle. And I do know this, if our guys, all right, are allowing their personalities to show and they're playing hard and they're playing fast and they're being accountable to one another, we'll give ourselves a chance to have a chance. And then uh, protection wise, uh, they really got after Patrick a lot with, with four guys and had to pressure him. What, why did they uh, seem to be so effective without having to bring extra people? Well, I just thought they, they played, it was obvious, they played better than what we did. And at the end of the day, kudos to them. They did an outstanding job of coming in here and doing what they needed to do. I've said this before, we got exactly what we deserve. Now it's up to us to make sure that we're, that we're mentally and physically ready for the uh, the battle in which we're about to face. Let's go next to Herbie Tiope. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Coach. Good afternoon. Sammy Watkins obviously put in his first full practice yesterday, first time since week five. Uh, so how did he look to you? you? You mentioned refreshed earlier, but I'm just curious, does he have any rust in there? And, and Brad, I'll have a follow-up after this. You know what, Sammy looks just like Sammy. He came out, he did some good things, and it's good having him back out there. Just the chemistry of all those guys being out there, communicating with one another, working together uh, on top of that, competing to make each other better. But, uh, you know, it, it's a good uh, addition having another piece of the puzzle back healthy. He should be fresh and ready to go. And of the wide receiver core, obviously, Nicole Hardman, his status is kind of iffy for this week on the reserve COVID list. But if Tyreek Hill is called upon the return punts, how do you – what are the, some of the challenges of balancing what you want to do offensively, knowing that one of your key pieces might also have to return punts? You know what? We're going to do whatever it takes to, to, to help us to win. So I know this. Tyreek, has, he's done it in the past. He understands the challenge that he'll be facing. And oops, I'm actually kind of excited. <laughs> What better opportunity for him to, to steal another uh, a moment of, of getting the ball and, and doing what he does? Hey, I, I'm going to get my popcorn as well. <laughs> Next to Harold Koontz. Go ahead, Harold. Well, yeah, get your popcorn ready, Coach. That's that's exactly right. Um, I just want to ask you about, uh, you know, you've mentioned before Patrick Mahomes being a, a, quote, competitive prick, to use your words. And he said yesterday that all that work that goes into preparing for this game and how it burns him that they work so hard and then to lose. Have you seen more of that competitive prick even more so than usual this week, considering that uh, you guys lost to the Raiders? Every single day. <laughs> and here's the thing. It, it, it shined after that game. It shined before the game. But that's, that's who Pat is. Pat is very, very competitive. He wants to be the very best at everything that he does. And one thing you got to understand, not just about Pat, but uh, one thing that we discuss here, and, and I think our guys, they really have a, a great feel for this and they understand this, okay? In order to appreciate winning, you have to despise losing. So what does that mean? We have to do everything, all right, 
leading up to that game to make sure that we don't experience that feeling. So what does that mean? That means we got to study a little bit more intense. Okay. We got to make sure that we're being fundamentally sound with our proper footwork. It could be recognizing the coverage, okay, from Pat's point of view or from a receiver point of view. Then when it's all said and done with making sure the effort and the attitude is where it needs to be and we're flying around and we're matching and, and, and outplaying their energy and their effort and their output. So that's what it's all about. It's making sure that we're doing everything under the sun so we don't have to have that feeling of emotion, of disappointment when the game is all said and done with. We've got time for a few more guys. We'll go right down the line. Adam, Pete, and then Haley. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Eric, I um, wanted to get your perspective as someone who um, not only has coached for a while with Andy, but also played for him for, what, one year, right? Yes. Um, why do so many guys like playing for him? And uh, Brad will have one quick follow-up as well. You know what it is? It's about the, the consistency in who he is. Coach Andy Reid is the same man that I've ever known. Okay, he's a loving father figure. I, obviously, he's a great husband. He's a great parent. But he's also a, a, a great head coach that makes everyone feel like they're the most important piece of the puzzle. And I think that's very important because one thing it demonstrates, it demonstrates leadership. It's, it's, it's making sure that everybody feels that they have a part of what we're building and what we have done. So those are the little things that, that's, that just adds up to big things because when it's all said and done with, not only as coaches, okay, but players, training room staff, equipment, so on and so forth. The building wants to make sure that we're doing everything under the sun to make sure our coach is one of the most successful coaches in the business. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but your year with him, you were basically a special teams player. Yes. How did he make you, in your words, feel like you were the most important piece of the puzzle? How did he do that with you? It, it, put it this way. I, I share this with you. I, I was offered to stay with another team, uh, an enormous amount of money, and I decided to go and play for Philly for the league minimal. And league minimal, you know, during that time ain't nothing compared to what it is now. <laughs> but I will say this. When I went on that trip and I visited uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, I felt at home. I felt a part of something. I felt a, a part of a building block that was necessary to help them to start it off. I was a part of a foundation that coach wanted to lay. And so I'm very proud to say, hey, in 1999, I was a part of the Philadelphia Eagles. Why? Because that foundation started something very special and it just continued to, uh, to improve each and every year, brick by brick and step by step. So next, Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Maybe this question is pretty unique to what would be 2020, but I mean, you guys, you, Patrick and Andy are this dynamic trio and really attacking defensive weaknesses and then flash across the screen yesterday, there's six players added to the COVID list, including a couple defensive starters. How does that alter your preparation? Is it back to a little bit more of older film work? Uh, how did you guys take that news? You know what? You, you, you don't, you don't change anything. You don't deviate from the norms. Cause one thing I do understand is that, Coach Gruden is a hell of a coach. He's going to do whatever he needs to do to get his team prepared and ready to play. Coach Gunn, their defensive coordinator, he's the same way. So they're going to continue being exactly who they are. Our job is not to allow um, anything to be a distraction because the only thing we want to make sure of that our guys have a complete understanding of the game plan and that we go out and execute it each and every day as we prepare for this Sunday. And then that's gonna give us the opportunity and the confidence to go out and play the way we expect to play. So regardless of what's taking place, I hate that the fact that, you know, that they have to do that and what has taken place because of what we're living in. And no one wants anybody to get sick and, and get caught up with this, uh, this virus that we're all dealing with. But when it's all said and done with, we just wanna make sure that we're at full strength, they're at full strength, and we'll, we'll, the chips will fall wherever they fall. We'll go last to Haley Lewis. Go ahead, Haley. Hey, Coach. Um, it seems like Mahomes really can't uh, or can't help himself from breaking every single record. And right now he's on track to be the only NFL quarterback to get 40 touchdowns and fewer than five interceptions all in the same season. Right now he only has one of those. And, of course, it came against the Raiders. I was wondering if you guys have talked about the fact that his one interception this year came against the Raiders and if you think that there's really any record that Mahomes can't break. 
You know what? It, it ain't anything that we've discussed. One thing about Pat, Pat takes a tremendous amount of pride in studying and preparing. He knows exactly what took place and what happened in that game. And he understands that he threw an interception in that particular uh, uh, game. But when it's all said and done, with, we just want to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to help us as a team to be prepared to handle what's take what's about this upcoming uh, opponent. And when it's all said and done with, that's all what matters. And I, I and I guarantee you, Pat will tell you the same. We're not going to treat this game any bigger <laughs> or any lower uh, uh, than any other opponent. We understand the Raiders are playing very damn good football. I have the utmost respect for them. But when it's all said and done with, it's, it's we just got to go out and play. Kansas City Chiefs football, let our personality show and make sure that we're being accountable to one another for 60 consecutive minutes. Okay. Yeah. Hey, look, good to see everybody. It's been a while. Uh, enjoyed the bye week. And now it's good to be back at it and working and getting ready for the Raiders. So with that, I'll open it up. Let's go first to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Steve, um, wanted to ask you about your pass rush. Just sort of, you guys are, by my stats, number one in the league in pressures, but around the middle of the league in sacks. So I just wanted to get your general thoughts on your pass rush and what you have to do to convert maybe some of those pressures into sacks. And Brad, I'll have one quick follow-up as well. Yeah, first of all, nice shades. Thank you. That look pretty good. <laughs> Keeping the sun, nice, nice to have the sun out there to have to have shades on for, right? Um, yeah, going back to the pass rush, look, the, uh, anytime we're getting four, five, six, whatever we're bringing and they're dropping back and throwing the football, what we're looking for is to try to affect the quarterback. Um, you know, look at if you're doing that and not letting them sit on the spot, we feel like we have a better chance of being successful when the ball's thrown. So that part of it's good. Would we like to f be finishing with more sacks, uh, to create, you know, negative plays and get us off the field? Absolutely. Uh, but I think if we can continue to affect the quarterback, I think that works in our favor. So hopefully those will come. We'll see. Sack's part of it. Okay. And just wanted to ask you also about um, DeAndre Baker. What do you remember about him when you were looking at the draft uh, last year? Yeah, it's been a while. Um, uh, press corner. I don't have a lot to add to that. I've kind of let uh, Brett Veach and his gang handle it. And when and if he's here, you know, then we'll take it from there. You know, one thing about, watching guys, whether they've been somewhere before, once they're here and they're ours, we're, we're working at them, doing what we're doing and getting them better. So we'll, we'll see what happens in that regard. Let's go next to Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Steve. Um, when you look back at that first Raiders game, it still is kind of an outlier as far as the amount of big plays, the explosive plays that they were able to have. So when you look at that film, and I'm sure he did this long before Raiders week returned, but what was, I mean, what was it scheme, execution, miscommunication? What did you sort of identify as the culprit there? It's a little bit of everything. It wasn't in, uh, wasn't one specific item. Um, I told you guys this before, after the game, I hold myself personally responsible for at least one of them um, because I just didn't think it was a good call and put C-dub in a bad down. Um, but look, that was nine plays, 214 yards, if I remember correctly. Uh, and it kind of changed the whole game and, it, and it, it did not help our football team. So, you know, the emphasis has been not to allow explosive plays. It's that every week. Uh, I got to be a little bit smarter with the calls that I make and everybody's eyes and what they're doing. Everybody does their job a little bit better. We hopefully that doesn't happen. Let's go next to Omar Ruiz. Go ahead, Omar. Hi, Steve. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, Andy seems to downplay it every year, his record after a just curious what sort of you see now here in the city that you guys had you know back from the early days in Philadelphia uh, that you think has led to some of this success after you guys have had some downtime yeah I, I've heard people talk about that before and I think it's great let's hope that continues you know I always wonder about I always worry about trends that if they're one way do they go the other way so I that, that doesn't we can't take that to the game and, and that won't guarantee a victory you know um, I, I don't give it much thought uh, I, I really don't have an answer for what the key is um, the one thing coach Reed has done is he stays pretty consistent he's handled I think all these bye weeks the same so maybe there's something in that but um, let's hope after Sunday we're, we're saying the same thing let's go next to Seren Petro go ahead Seren uh, Coach, uh, on the subject of Baker, but just not – that's the jumping-off point, but just in general. I mean, he, he struggled last year. 
uh, for the Giants on the field. I'm talking about just just as a play. I mean, we know some of the stories, right? What he's been through off the field, but uh, it, you know, is it is that a spot that you can have kind of an apprenticeship year and really come around in the second year? Is it is it a scheme thing? Because he was very highly thought of and very decorated in college to have those kind of struggles. How much you know can you and you know improve from one year to the next? Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not aware of the struggles. Um, I haven't. We, we didn't dive into that. I mean, uh, Brett and his staff have been all over that thing. And, you know, anytime we can add a good football player, uh, I think that's a good thing. I mean, anybody that comes in here, uh, look, we start from scratch. Uh, we try to take the tools they have and make them better. You know, Sam and Dave, uh, when anybody comes in here, they try to do that. And we, we go about it as if this person may someday have to help us. Uh, whether that happens right away or later on, we don't know that. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, it's hard for me to tell that. Um, don't have don't have him in here. Don't know a lot about him. Uh, maybe I'll have more for you after, if he's here. You know, if we can get him for a little while. Thanks to Karen Kornacki. Go ahead, Karen. Hey, Coach Spags. Can you um, tell me what you expect from Derek Carr based on the first meeting this season? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I expect him to be as smart as he was in that game. I just thought he did a terrific job the last time we played him and getting his offense in and out of good or bad plays, however you want to look at it. Uh, he was one step ahead of us, one step ahead of me the whole time. Uh, I give him a lot of credit for that. I've always thought he was that way, and I got a lot of respect for John and what they packaged together. We're going to try to be one step ahead in more plays than they are um, and try to find a way to make some explosive plays ourselves. But I, I got a lot of respect for what they do and, and the quarterback that Derek is. We've got time for a couple more guys. We'll go Pete and then Steve. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Coach. I know that Legarius Sneed returned to practice before the bye. I was curious what you've seen in his game at, at practice, and does it give you confidence that he might be able to pick up right where he left off, whether that is this week or in the weeks to follow? Yeah, I mean, uh, look, we're talking one day. I mean, we had him in some walkthroughs on Tuesday, you know, yesterday morning walkthrough. So it was one. I don't know how my, I don't know what the reps were. Um, it's a little hard now, but I'm, I'm anxious and excited to get him out there again today. And then tomorrow on a Friday where we get a little speed against them. But, you know, we'll tread lightly. You know, it's been a, it's been a while. Uh, he's got to get oiled up. I mean, if I'd like to think we can get him right to where he was playing um, early in the season, but that probably is not realistic. So we'll take it one step at a time. Yeah. And we'll go last to Steve Walls. Good, Steve. Hey, hey Steve. Uh, um, <clears throat> I know you talked a little bit about Carr, but uh, he said yesterday, Derek Carr did, that uh, it, he's – if, if he has to, he's comfortable with getting into a shootout with Patrick. When, when you when you hear a guy come out and say a statement like that, did that change uh, what you want to do uh, defensively and, and how, as far as how aggressive you want to be? Uh, I don't know that. Look, we got to go in and do what we do. I mean, we're putting a game plan together to hope against every team, you know, to hopefully uh, keep the points total down. I mean, our job defensively is, you know, points allowed. And no matter how we do it, um, turnovers or – negative plays, sacks, interceptions, whatever it is, we got to try to find a way to keep the other team from putting points on the board. Um, again, I go back, I got a lot of respect for this offense, the quarterback, the head coach, all the weapons that they have. I think our guys on defense feel the same way. I also think they accept the challenge and are looking forward to it. I mean, it's a good rivalry and a good game. And they did, they listened, they, they kicked our butt the first time. We hope that doesn't happen again. Okay, we are ready to get started and we'll start with Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Dave, I hope the bye week treated you well. Andy had mentioned during it that he wanted Harrison to take a step back and just kind of reevaluate and, and get a fresh look on this kicking extra point situation. What's your gauge on it as you kind of enter the second half of the year here? Yeah, that's exactly what he did. And uh, we're on the same page uh, with that, with, with Bucker. He, he had a good week off. Uh, you know, you tell a guy to take a rest and, and, and get away from it for a while, but not, not Bucker. He's not going to do it. So... He's going to go out there and kick, and he did it. And and he came back yesterday, and and we he was really hitting the ball well, and he really looked good in practice. Uh, hopefully, put another day together today. So, uh, so far, so good. Let's go next to Matt Derrick. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, coach. You you added a familiar name with Tommy's brother coming to the practice squad. Uh, what can you tell me? Tell us about him. What you know? What led led to that? And then Brad, I'll have a follow up. Well, Johnny is, you know, he's a good punter uh, coming out, uh, you know, a few years back, uh, the Raiders drafted him. Um, 
Uh, we, 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 we liked him coming out, but as a guy and, you know, he was on the street and, and he was available, uh, somebody that can come in. It was a really good idea by, by Veach, uh, to bring a guy in just in case, you know, the COVID, uh, thing hits us, you know, it, it hits one of our guys that we have a guy that's, uh, in the building tested that we can just plug in there and, and plug and play. So, you know, he's a guy that can come in and punt for us. He can be a holder. Uh, you know, if Bucker went down with COVID, if he was out, then we would probably kick with uh, Johnny. I mean, with Tommy, and then Johnny would be the holder. So, uh, you know, they're interchangeable parts. You know, one guy can fit a lot. You know, do a lot of things, and uh, that's why we have him here. It's a pretty good idea by Veach. And, and Johnny obviously has a little bit more experience at the NFL level, and, and has done holding a little bit longer. Um, would you ever, you know, with 48 man rosters, would you ever consider, you know, giving a push to have a second guy that, you know, could hold kicks on game day and let Tommy just focus on punting? We would just work him in practice. He's a practice squad player that we would work in practice just in case he's an emergency guy, uh, strictly. Uh, we would never, uh, you know, I don't think there'll be a situation where he would, he would come in, you know, for Tommy unless we needed it, unless we had to have it, you know, I mean, so. But it's it is it's a good it's a good luxury to have you know to have a guy like that that, that you can plug in and I tell you you know the and he he's a really good fit too I mean is there's no pressure I mean obviously he's going to support his brother he's going to support Tommy in every way and you know it's a really good situation for us and I'm not sure there's there's been brothers at one position like that you know at the same position you know as a punter or kicker uh, on the same team so it's kind of a unique deal as well. Let's go next to Herbie Tiope. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Coach, good morning. good morning. Nicole Hardman, obviously on the reserve COVID list, but he's also the primary punt returner. Uh, if he's not available on Sunday, who, who, who would be the next man that would you turn to Tyreek Hill? Yeah, Tyreek, uh, obviously, uh, you know, is a pretty good option for us. Uh, which we would use that option if we if we needed it. Uh, you know, we have, like I said before, we have other guys. Uh, you know, DeMarcus, uh, you know, he can do it. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, Fenton can play it. I mean, we have we have a number of guys that can do it. You know, Pringle could play, you know, so uh, you never know which way we'd go there. But, you know, obviously, you know, Tyreek would be a probably a number one option. All right. Well, we'll get started with Harold Koontz. Go ahead, Harold. Hey, Tyron, hope you're doing well, man. Oh, well. Oh, good, man. Hey, uh, two full question, both kind of contrasting topics, but one, obviously after the Raiders game, you said it, you, it's good to have some motivation and going forward, that's what we'll lean on. Um, just how have you been more, more motivated after that game? And then also want to ask you about your, your tyrants, turkeys and what you're doing today and how cool is that for you to continue giving to the community, even during these COVID times? Yeah. You know, like I mentioned earlier, I mean, well, obviously a few weeks ago about the Raiders, we hadn't lost a game in a while. You know, I think defensively, you know, we hadn't really played that bad in a while. So for us, it was a gut check. Uh, it was a reality check for us. And, uh, you know, like I said, after that game, I thought we needed it. You know, obviously we coming off the Super Bowl victory and starting the season the way we started it, um, you know, you can kind of get complacent. You can kind of think that things are always going to go your way. So uh, I was glad that we kind of, you know, had that moment. Um, so, cause we've really been getting better um, in my mind, uh, since that day. So, uh, and then, you know, with the holiday season approaching, obviously, you know, it's been a rough time for, for everybody. Um, and for me and my foundation, we're just trying to do our best to, to lighten the load, to, to, to help at least one family smile, to, to make one kid, you know, just remember the good times, you know, from, from this year. So um, uh, I'm grateful to have a platform to, to be able to have a foundation to, to be able to impact and, and really try my best to help people. Let's go next to Karen Kornacki. Go ahead, Karen. Hi, Karen. Um, hey. Talk to me a little bit about Derek Carr, what you saw in that game from him and what you can expect this time around. Well, I thought, you know, I thought he played a great game. Uh, I thought he got to the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, he was patient. Uh, he was calm, got his team in the right place. Um, uh, and he was able to really be effective. Um, and I think even, you know, watching, you know, film of him, you know, really the last couple of weeks, um, you know, that's what we going to have to really focus on is how can we disrupt him in the pocket? How can we get him to move his feet? You know, how can our big guys up front, you know, uh, really impact the game? And then on the back end, you know, how can we stop those big shots that, that they love to take? You know, um, and I think John Gruden and Derek Carter, they, they've really been working well together. Then you can kind of see that on tape. And um, so it's going to be very important for us to, 
to really to really hone in on him from from the very first play to to mix up different disguises to not give him uh, the easy way out um, to really make him work you know from down to down. Let's go next to Todd Lebo. Go ahead, Lebo. Hey, Tyron. This game obviously meant a lot to the Raiders. Uh, they took this victory lap around your parking lot. I want to ask you about that. Is that to resonate in the locker room with you guys? And you've been on a couple of different teams. How long does it take you to get acclimated into a rivalry like that um, to where things like that could happen and you, and you, and you, and they, and you care about them? Well, I think, you know, you know for, for me, I think all these games are important. You know, I think this is the NFL and, you know, you got to try if, Got to try your best to win, you know, each and every week. Um, I think division games are even more, you know, important. So I don't think it's it's any speech that 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 need to be made or, you know, even if the other team happens to give you some, you know, bullets and board material, it's like, okay, this is still a division game. It's still a big game, no matter, you know, what happened last time. So I think that's really our focus, you know, right now is how can we just play our best game? How can we be the best, you know, version of the Chiefs? Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Right, I remember back in January during the playoff run, how you mentioned that the bye week was really the pivotal moment and when you guys took another level on defense. Um, with much of the same guys back in year two, what gives you confidence that you guys can reach another level uh, coming off this bye week? Well, I think we got great coaches, you know, for one. Um, and then I think we got some players in our room that – that are just motivated to, to be the best, you know, that they can be. And I think that, you know, a lot of guys are always looking in the mirror, you know, being critical of themselves first, you know, and, um, but I like to see our coaches, you know, they, they're really the ones that that studying uh, the analytics and all the different things, the little things that, that we kind of overlook uh, to, to get better at. So I probably say that bye week is, is good from that standpoint, because you can, you get away from scouting other teams and now you're able to kind of self scout yourself. And I think that's really what's, you know, put some teams, you know, in the right position going forward. Got time for a couple more guys. We'll go Sam and then Adam. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Tyron, you mentioned that the Raiders like to take their shots. A couple of those shots got you guys last time. I'm wondering if you've pinpointed the the reason for that. And also, is this game just one of 16 for you guys? Or when a team does get you, do, 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 are you looking a little bit more forward to this game? Yeah, I don't think you ever want to lose two two times, especially to the same team especially to a division team, you know, especially to a team that, you know, I mean, these two franchises go, go way back. Um, and I think the answer to the first part of your question, it, you know, it comes down to us on the back end too, as well, you know, not giving him that easy look, not giving him the easy read. And I thought we did that maybe one or two, you know, a few more times than we would have liked, you know, last time. And I thought he, like I said, his presence in the pocket, you know, um, I think he's really comfortable. He's in control when he gets, you know, to the line of scrimmage. And so if we can mix up certain looks, if we could disguise certain looks and then get to our spots, I think I think we'll be in a better uh, position defensively. We'll go last to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Tyron. Um, Henry Ruggs had a couple big plays against you guys the last time. Is it one thing to, to see a guy on paper runs a 4-2 and, and also to maybe see him on video? You can see that he runs fast, but is, is it another to, to, to experience that and, and get a real feel for it when you're playing against him, yeah, if that makes any sense? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've had great work against, you know, a lot of speed guys. I think for us it comes down to, you know, just understanding, you know, football and understanding, you know, where we're at on the field. You know, a lot of times – you know, it's, I mean, he, he's pretty fast. He runs by people, but a lot of those routes are scheme routes. And if we can kind of, you know, see that pre-snap, I think it'll put us in a better position, you know, to try our best to stay on top of him. Cause you know, uh, he's one of those guys that, you know, if, if he's even, you know, he's leaving. So um, the biggest part for us is obviously to, to get hands on him at the line of scrimmage, but, you know, see where he is in a formation, because I think that it does say a lot, you know, about what they want to do with him you know, uh, when he's in certain spots. Perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. If you're ready to get started, we'll start with Herbie Teope. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Coach, always a pleasure to see you. All right. What's up, baby? Hey, it's same old, same old. Hey, you've obviously played at a high level in the NFL, a two-time former All-Pro, but when when a cornerback seems to go through a, a period of struggles, what is your message to them as, as drawn from your own experience as a cornerback and also as a coach? 
And when you going through struggles at, at this position, we always talk about you got to have a short memory because other teams are going to continue to watch the film, see the little small nuances that you're not picking up, and they're going to continue to try to try to attack those uh, issues. But you know you got to work through them. Um, and when you have practice time and you have downtime. Um, and after practice and, and the coaches are giving you all the little small nuggets, you have to go out there and practice on them. But majority of that stuff is really done in the off season um, because it moves so fast through the course of the season and one game plan switches throughout the course of the week. It's kind of hard to fix a little small things. So during the off season, where we always talk about players, you have to get this stuff done in the off season, then just make little adjustments during the season. And specifically that coach, obviously, Traverius Ward was hard on himself on Twitter. You know, he, he mentioned after the Jets game, he was in a slump. How encouraged are you when you see a player be hard on himself like that? Um, just try to talk, talk him through it. Um, and, you know, and I was looking at him like, why are you so hard on yourself? You're doing some really good things, even though you have one hand. But he wanted to be that dominant corner, you know, throughout the course of the season. But things come up, you know, injuries happen. This is the NFL. And, you know, guys, they're going to watch those things throughout the course of the uh, the season. And, you know, they get injury reports and they're going to try to attack those things. But he was able to fight through it and then just continue just to talk him through them and then just being encouraging him throughout the course of that time. Um, um, and, and now he's playing very well. So just happy for him that he's able to stick with it and not get into a, a deep funk and, and, and being able to fight his way out of it. Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, Sam. Uh, this is kind of a two-part question for you, but can you explain what the, what the mood and the atmosphere was with the guys watching the film shortly after the loss to the Raiders and how it may have changed or what the mood was like looking at it now going into the rematch on Sunday? Um, one of the things, when you look at those guys and you listen to them going to that locker room, um, you know, they felt that they let you know, each other down because it was some plays that was left out there on the football field and then just listening to them throughout the course of the meeting. And, you know, they have their little group sessions and, you know, you can hear the things over the top. Listen, guys, if we make one or two plays on third down, we get off the football field, you know, we win that game. And, you know, now when they come out of practice yesterday, you know, they're flying around, they're moving around, they're thinking about it, they're talking about it. And, you know, even in their breaks, you know, throughout the course of the meetings, those are the little things that they're talking about. These guys know that they're going to get their very best from each and every team every single week. And they know they have to put their best foot forward. And that's what we we're trying to portray to them. You know, you can't take anybody lightly. You got to be prepared every single week. You're going to see some new things. You're going to see some old things. But bottom line is you got to expect anything from anybody any given week. So, you know, just having these guys and listening to one another and and talking football on a consistent basis, that's the most encouraging part out of this group of uh, guys that we have, not only on the defensive side, but on the offensive side uh, as well. That's how close these guys are. They talk one another and they talk, talk through a lot of things. Let's go next to Adam Teicher. Go down. Hey, Sam, um, with uh, regard to Legereus Sneed, whether he comes back this week, next week, whenever it is, what's reasonable to expect from a young guy like that when he's first getting back into this after missing so much time? And Brad, I'll have one quick follow up. Well, I'm just the way that he started off at the beginning of the season. I'm trying to see if he could pick up right where he left off, you know, because he was playing at a high level um, and just from his maturity since he stepped into the building, you can really see it, you know, on a, uh, on a daily basis with this kid. Um, so I'm just really happy to just see how he worked his way through. Uh, and, and normally when you get young guys in this situation, they get an injury, you know, they will fall into a tank. Every single day this kid came with a smile on his face. He was talking football. He was encouraged. And, you know, he didn't have a, have a slump. And he didn't get into a slump. So, you know, just happy to just see him running around out there. He, he did a lot of uh, conditioning throughout the course of, um, you know, the time that he was down. And, you know, out there on the scout team, he was moving around extremely well. So um, it's just going to be uh, a situation where uh, Coach Reed, you know, makes a decision if he's going to be up or he's going to be down. And Coach Spags feeling comfortable enough to be able to implement him into the defense. But just trying to work him work his way back in so we don't have any set backs yeah and um also deandre baker i'm just wondering what you remember about him when he was coming out in the draft last year 
Um, I mean, very uh, a press corner, you know, a, a physical guy, a ball hawk, a guy that's all the way always around the football. I've known this kid for a very long time, um, you know, from from Florida. Um, but uh, you know, we don't really know, so we just want to get him into the building, get him used to the Kansas City uh, way of doing things and implementing that. Um, but you know. It, when you have an opportunity to, to to grab a first round talent and, and implement into a uh, into your scheme into your system, you know Vich and Coach uh, Coach Reed they did an awesome job of having an opportunity to get him here. So you know getting him and getting him caught up to speed the way that we do things that's going to be the most important part. We got two left guys. We'll go Seren and then Pete to close it up. Go ahead, Seren. Coach, kind of to follow up on that, he, he had some struggles, right? Young young players will do that, but he, he struggled a lot, really, with the Giants. How much is that, you know, do you come in overconfident out of the SEC? I'm just, I'm talking in general. I, I know you haven't, you don't have him in here and working with him, but, you know, and how much better can you get uh, year one to year two after, after you've had a tough first year? Um, it's going to start right here and it's going to start up here, you know, so um, it's our job to, to get him in a position to be successful. Um, you know, uh, just when we were doing and I was doing, you know, my uh, uh, evaluation of him, I, I thought, you know, if, if I had opportunity to work with him as well as Coach Merritt, I think that we would be able to get him in a position and that's what we're going to have to do. You know, Veach brings the talent and Coach Reed brings it in and it's our job to get him, you know, to playing fast, understanding the system and, you know, believing in themselves and, and and that's one of the things, uh, you know, with the group of guys that we have in our room, you know, they don't shy away from work. And, you know, being that he's been out of football for a time in a while now, he's just got to catch up speed and, and the speed of the room. And, you know, having guys like Breland, Tyron and, and Ward as well, you know, who's picked up and picked up their level of play. He's going to have to just fit in exactly where these guys are and understanding that we do still have some very talented young corners on our team with Snead as well as Bo Keys and the rest of the guys, Fenton. So, you know, seeing the way that we played so far and hopefully just got to add to what his skill set is to what we already have in the room. And let's go to Pete Sweeney next. Go ahead, Pete. Coach, Juan Thornhill, as we know, was playing really strong before the playoffs last year in the, in the big injury. So you had a chance at the bye week to maybe eval how he's looked. How is his progress in maybe getting back to that level of play? Um, you know, we working at it every single day, you know, it, you know, it baffles me, you know, just to see how quickly he's made it back eight months. You know, I, I've been around this game for a very long time and seeing guys in, in these type of situation, it takes them a, a year and a half to really get back. But, you know, the way that he fought throughout the course of the off season and, you know, being that he had a lot of downtime and, you know, it, it was spit of him recovering and not out there running and jumping and moving around and, and doing a lot of rehab you know coach Reed and 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 uh, the trainers down there they got him back really really fast but you know he he's still a work in progress and he's only going to get better he's only going to get stronger he knows the defense so that's the great part about it uh you know having more knowledge and not having to think as much for as the beginning of last year he had to think now he don't really have to think as much and he can just focus on what's in front of him getting the calls out and then just going to make plays so he's getting better every single week he just continue need to get stronger and hopefully have no sets setbacks but he's doing an awesome job you know and, and being up for a young guy to have those that type of injury and, and coming back this fast good good we'll uh, we'll get started with uh, Nate Taylor go ahead Nate hey Brendan uh, this has been a discussion and a topic that's gone on since you've been with the team, but the idea that Chris wants to show more of himself on the edge, just you got to do it a little bit these last couple of weeks. Just how much can that be an element moving forward if Chris can be you know, productive both on the inside and on the edge if needed? Yeah, I think that's uh, helpful to all of us. Um, you know, anywhere he's productive, we want to use him. Um, you know, there's certain situations where that becomes more viable than others. There's um, a handful of things that, that factor into that. He's uh, he's so good inside um, and does such a great job getting the push in the middle and, and also in the run game in the middle that, um, you know, the majority of his time has been spent in there. But that's definitely something we look at each week when we put the game plan together and we look at the matchups, the issues that we've got to deal with from an offensive standpoint. And then also, you know, what are our options in terms of people available and, and how do we best serve the needs of the entire defense to help us win the game. Let's go next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. 
Hey, Brendan, just wanted to get your thoughts on where you guys are with the pass rush part of it through the first half of the season uh, in, in general. And Brad, I'll have a quick follow up when he's done. So, you know, it's, it's a uh, an ongoing process, I would say, with the pass rush in an evolving situation. You know, I think um, we, we've done some good things at times. I think we, we aspire to improve and, and continue to get better. And we're working hard at doing that. Um, I feel like, you know, we've executed some things really well, and there's certain things that, that we haven't executed as well in terms of the game plan. And each week, it, you know, brings different challenges, mobile quarterbacks uh, versus quarterbacks that uh, are more pocket passers and things of that nature. Um, but we're, we're grinding through it. We've uh, done a bunch of evaluation through the bye week. And, um, you know, we're, as with everything we're doing, we're going to try to continue to improve. Okay. And um, the stats I have at least show you guys are number one in the league in pressures, but somewhere in the middle of the league in, in terms of uh, sacks. So what do you have to do to convert? I know pressure is a good thing in and of itself. I'm not saying that, but what do you have to do to convert one to the other, the second half of the season? Yeah. You know, I think um, the stats, you know, you can look at the stats and, and they can tell a story. I'm not sure they tell the whole story for you. Um, you know, some of the, you know, the, it's fractions of inches in this game. You know, the difference between a quarterback hit and a sack, uh, between a sack and a sack force fumble, um, you know, it's it's fractions of seconds. And, um, you know, our execution needs to continue to improve would be my best answer. And I'd say, you know, mix of rush and coverage as well. You know, tighter coverage gives you that extra moment to get there. Um, the, the rush being disruptive, helps the coverage end of things. And so, you know, tying that all together and, and in general, to answer your question, it's simple execution um, on, on all ends. And, and that goes through communication. It goes through the physical part of it on the field. It goes into the technique of executing it. Let's go next to Matt McMullen. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Coach, uh, I just want to ask you about Tershawn Wharton. Uh, you know, UDFA, small school guy. He's really impressed this season, though. Uh, what's impressed you about him this year? Well, I, you know, he has been impressive. I would agree with that statement and his work ethic and, and the way he handles the day-to-day -day operation. Um, you would not know that this guy is a rookie. You would not know that this guy came from a small school, to be quite honest with you. Um, he has a, a professional demeanor and a work ethic and uh, a maturity about him that's beyond his years. Um, been pleased with the way he operates both off the field and on the field from a practice standpoint, from a game standpoint, the effort that he puts in um, has been impressive to me. And we'll go last to Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Brennan. Um, I was also going to ask about Turk. You saw him play in college. What, obviously, you know, you, you probably hear some things and you, you can hear a coach say that a guy's got a good work ethic, but I, I assume you have to rely on other stuff as well. What else did you like about him when you saw him in college? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, you certainly saw some physical attributes. And uh, I would say this, I would give a tremendous amount of credit to our scouting department. Um, and, and from them identifying him and kind of bringing him to the table. Um, but what you saw, you saw him, in my opinion, when I first came to know him, uh, was as the scouting department gave them to me. And I started watching the East West Shrine game. And, you know, he went to that game and, and did some really good things, um, both in practice and in the game. And he was uh, dynamic in the one-on-one -on -one pass rush settings. He was physical in the, in the run drills that they did. You turn on the game tape, his effort and pursuit was fantastic. So that kind of sparked the interest, if you will. Um, he doesn't meet all the prototype measurables and some of those different things. Um, and coming from a small school, the level of competition, when you go to the, the, the college game tape, you've got to make some, you know, determination as, as to how that's going to project to the NFL level when he's playing against better quality competition. Um, but he's certainly, you know, done a nice job for us and, and we're excited to have him. We're thankful to have him and we hope that he continues to progress, which uh, he's showed that he's got the ability to do that. Hey, Andy, I uh, had a couple of questions about um, Eric Fisher. Uh, as you know, remember, things were a little bit rough for him his first couple of years in the NFL. What did you see from him during that time that would lead you to believe he would eventually come through to the other side and become a, a, a starter on a, a Super Bowl team? Yeah. And Brad, I'll have a follow-up as well. Sorry. Sure. Um, 
one thing we knew about Fish when we got him was what a great athlete he was. And he can do some things physically that a lot of people can't do. So that was always there. And then you add into that, that um, and like any young player, you go through some ups and downs, you go through some, some struggles in the end, it makes you better for it. If you push through it, he came to work every day. Uh, he's a real, a very good worker uh, and he pushed through it. And then every year he, Hey, I, I learned something. I put this in my hip pocket. I've gained some experience. Uh, he matured strength wise. Uh, so he, what we've seen out of uh, Eric is he's gotten better every year that he's been here um, in, in more ways than, than one, not just as a player, but as a leader um, on this football team as well. Yeah, and I understand that he every player develops it at his own rate, some guys faster than others. But in his case, what kind of took so long? What why was the, it, it, it did it take a few years for him to become what he is now? Well, um, I, I might phrase that differently. I, I see it a little differently. I think, uh, you know, when you come in as the number one pick in the draft, there's um, a level of expectation, uh, wh whether that's real or not, uh, you know, and then, but a, a player feels that. Um, but if you look at what's real, okay, hey, this is a young guy. He's got to learn how to play in this league. He's got to learn uh, the, the competition he's going against. You know, I was a young left tackle in this league myself, and it, it took me a while. I didn't play my best ball until my seventh year. Um, so by that, I'd say Fish was miles ahead of where I was. Um, so uh, I, I've been very pleased with him, and uh, we're lucky to have him. We'll go Serene and then Matt. Go ahead, Serene. Coach, uh, your tackles missing some time and everything uh, from practice. Uh, how much does that uh, affect, you know, kind of trying to come together? And then just to, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the follow-up is just what was the problem? The Raiders really got the most pressure on you guys in that first game. And uh, what, what, what did they do that made them so effective only bringing four? Yeah, uh, well, to your first question, um, we're fortunate in we've got two veteran, very experienced tackles in uh, Mitch and, and Fish. Um, and so, yeah, while we want guys here practicing, uh, working whenever they can, hey, stuff happens. You know, you guys have to get better if they've got an injury. You know, we got a little COVID situation this week. Now we got Fish back uh, in the fold working, but they can draw on their experience. And um, so the uh, silver lining in, in having those guys out for a bit is we get other guys some some much needed work. You know, we get a chance to develop young guys. Yes, your Durant jumps in last week, um, gets, you know, 13 snaps in a ball game against a good rusher, did a nice job. He gets some, some more work. It gives us a chance to move guys around in there, which we love to do just to get them some extra training. Um, so that's the plus of that. And then uh, with regards to the game against uh, – uh, the Raiders uh, previously, look, um, we came it out, came out of that thinking uh, we, we've got to do a better job. We got to uh, put our nose to the grindstone, get to work. We, we got outplayed there and uh, those guys got the win. So they, they did a nice job there. You know, it's a, a young, uh, aggressive, talented group, well coached, and, and they come to play. They play the game the way it's supposed to be played. And, uh, you know, they got us that day. So we know uh, the challenge that's in store for us. We know what we're capable capable of, and we're working our tails off uh, to go out there and, and compete and get a win. We'll go last to Matt Derrick. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Coach, just, just two quick questions. Um, one, you know, you, you had Austin come back to start at center just before the bye. Um, is it kind of your view that when he's healthy that Austin is your starter there at center? And then secondly, I mean, you, you mentioned the 13 snaps from Yasir Durant. You know, what did you see in, from those 13 snaps that you liked? Um, well, y yes, Austin's our starter at center. And, uh, you know, we feel like we've got two capable starters there. Um, when you talk about Daniel Kilgore, who, who filled in and did great, uh, and he's played a long time in this league. Um, you know, it was good, good to get Austin back healthy. Uh, it was also good to get Daniel that work. We're going to need all hands on deck before this is all said and done. I can promise you that. Um, and then Yasir, you know, I was really pleased. Hey, didn't blink any goes, uh, you know, gets into some tough third down situations, ha handles a very good uh, pass rusher who's got a, you know, a wicked spin move, handled that. 
nicely. And, and the other thing, you know, with Yasir is, uh, besides being uh, able to play multiple positions, uh, because we've developed him at guard as well, um, you know, he knows those spots, but he's a big, strong man. Okay, so when, when he's got his feet in the ground and he uses his length, uh, it's awful tough for a defender to get around him. He, uh, I'm very excited about him. 